What's going on, everybody? I am back to break down this eight-game NBA DFS slate on DraftKings and FanDuel, giving you the top plays to get in that cash line this evening. We got a large slate for a Sunday slate, so excited to get into it. Should be an actual uh, pretty good one here. Um, and we do have some injury news, some stuff that's going to impact some rotations, some guys that want to get a big bump up, all of that fun stuff, guys. If you're new to the channel and you haven't checked out the sponsor of the program, the sponsor of the program is Parlay Play. Parlay Play is a fun player prop site over here. They do offer NFL, NBA, hockey, uh, boxing, etc. Uh, and it is an over-under format, similar to other formats that you may have played, like a prize picks, etc. You can head on over here, you can do the more or less format, you can do the hit it format, where you predict the correct range for players, all sorts of different forms. And we have started the KJK DFS Bankroll Challenge. If you haven't been tuning in, we have turned the risk-free $10 that when you get when you sign up today using that promo code KJK003 or the link below in the description. You also get a risk, or I'm sorry, an instant match deposit up to $50. So check them out, guys. We use that $10 to turn it into over $200. We've been up to over $500. We've gotten a little bit risky with the... Uh, the four picks as of late, we've just been going for it because we've been up, so we're just having fun with it. As you can see, uh, if you do the more or less format, you can pick two picks for 3x payout, three picks for 6x payout, or four picks for the 10x payout. You have to hit all four of those to get the 10x payout. And uh, we've been doing a lot of $25 to win 250 We've hit multiple multiple of those. That's how why we got up to over $500. But uh, recently, we've taken a step back, but we're still up to over $200, starting with only $10. So sign up today using that promo code KJK003 or the link below in the description. And if you are interested in some premium content, I do offer that over on patreon.com slash KJK underscore DFS. You can get access to all my premium content tools, my premium projections, all that fun stuff, guys. So with that being said, don't forget to stay tuned to the end of the video for my lock of the night, fan favorite segment. We nailed it again last night going with Bobby Portis and looking forward to continuing to keep those calls up. So first game on the slate, we have Washington taking on Orlando as far as this game is concerned. Wendell Carter Jr. was listed as out last night as far as tonight. Uh, that is to be, you know, remain to be seen. His hamstring, he was ruled out last time. Uh, that is going to be a bump up for a Terrence Ross, a Mo Bamba. Both should get more usage, more minutes. Uh, Mo Bamba is going to have a lot more rebounding upside with there being no Wendell Carter Jr. out there. Terrence Ross off the bench should get a lot more. Gary Harris also gets a bump up. He had a really good game last night, putting up 41 DraftKings points. So he's another person that you should be uh, certainly looking to on this slate tonight. He does grade out as a pretty respectable play over here on fan. I mean, I'm sorry, on DraftKings for me. Terrence Ross, Gary Harris, and Mo Bamba all grading out as uh, pretty great plays for me on the first look aspect here so those would be my favorites and followed by Cole Anthony for upside at their price tag. Cole Anthony at 7.6 though I'm not gonna lie priced very reasonably over here on DraftKings. He was priced up to 8.1 now he's taking a dip down to 7.6. Look at the game environment this one it comes in with a 220 and a half over under with a seven and a half point spread in favor of Washington. If the game's going to stay close it's a good chance it stays close because Cole Anthony's playing a, a great game and the price tag is looking very friendly. So I definitely have a lot of interest on the Orlando side if Wendell Carter Jr. continues to be out. On the Washington side, we've seen Kyle Kuzma's price tag go all the way up to 8-1. That's a little bit scary. Don't get me wrong. The guy's been playing great basketball, but that is a very high price tag for a Kyle Kuzma, who at times has put up 53-66, but that was when there was no Spencer Dinwiddie. Spencer Dinwiddie has returned. Um, I think that's going to kind of do his usage enough to where that's a little bit scary for me. I'd much rather go to Spencer Dinwiddie at only a 6-3 price tag, taking on an Orlando team that's really struggled defensively. Looking at my defensive half-court and putbacks tool over here on Patreon, we can see that the Orlando Magic are 27th in the league in points per possession rank, so they are in the bottom four, four teams uh, as far as defense is concerned. So I certainly do like the Spencer Dinwiddie play. And as far as a pay option on the Washington side, obviously it's Bradley Beal, most upside on the team. 9-6, he's seen his price tag plummet from 10-4 to 9-6, so I do think that that is certainly worth noting as well. Uh, multiple guys in this game have seen their price tag come down, and we can definitely take advantage of that. So Bradley Beal, Cole Anthony, certainly interesting plays. Kyle Kuzma, like I said, his price tag really hasn't come down. I think Spencer did what he's priced very reasonably. And especially Mo Bamba. Franz Wagner as well, only 6-1. I mean, that's a really cheap price tag for a guy that has the type of upside he does. He's very score reliant, so you're really going to need him to go out there and get some buckets for him to really pay off. But we're paying 6-1 as compared to where we were paying 7-2 for him for quite some time there um, on this Orlando Magic squad. New Orleans Pelicans taking on the Toronto Raptors. First big piece of news is Josh Hart is out in this one for the New Orleans Pelicans. That is a pretty big piece of news. Garrett Temple, Najee Marshall should see some more minutes, as well as probably a, a Nikhil Alexander-Walker should get a nice uh, minute bump and usage bump. But the big uh, guys are going to be Brandon Ingram, Jonas Valanciunas, and Devontae Graham. Those three guys are going to get a big bump up with there being no Josh Hart. There should be more shooting to go around for those three guys, more rebounding upside, 
surprisingly, a lot more rebounding upside with Josh Hart off the floor because he's just a guy that grabs a lot of rebounds. So uh, Jonas Valanciunas, Herbert Jones could be seeing some more usage as well. Herbert Jones just seen his price tag come up to 5K. Now, that's still respectable, but he was down in like the 4K range for quite some time there. Uh, so it's not quite as easy to be clicking his name. Once again, with there being no Josh Hart, I do think he gets a nice bump up in usage. So he's going to be a lot easier to click on with there being no Josh Hart. But just keep your eyes on that price tag because at 5K, starting to climb up a little bit too much more liking. He still does grade out as a pretty great play, play for me in my projection model here. So I certainly do like him. Uh, Nikhil Alexander-Walker at 3.7. Garrett Temple at 3.4 are the two guys that are going to get a lot more minutes. And certainly do grade out as a pretty great value place in this game as well. With there being no Josh Hart. On the Toronto side, running it back, there are some guys that are priced very friendly on FanDuel. I know that for sure. But also here on DraftKings, OG Anunoby is only 6'7". Um, and Gary Trent Jr. is only 5'5". Five, five. Both those guys play lots of minutes. Both those guys get a great matchup here taking on a New Orleans Pelican squad that's really struggled defensively on the season. So OG Anunoby at 6'7", certainly standing out a bunch to me over here on DraftKings. Great matchup, great price tag. And the same can be said for Gary Trent Jr. down here at 5'5". Five, five. Um, playing 35 minutes a game. 5-5 five, five against a Pelican squad that really struggles to defend. Uh, pulling up my defensive half court and putbacks tool here, looking at the New Orleans squad. 24th overall in points per possession rank, 29th in half court uh, points per play rank. That's second to dead la to last in the league. So I'm certainly willing to target this uh, New Orleans Pelican squad and Gary Trent at a very friendly price tag. And the thing about this Toronto rotation is the minutes are just so solidified. Scotty Barnes, also a guy that's going to play in the mid-30s, priced very reasonably if you want to go to him at 7-4. The payup options are Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet. They're just priced much more appropriately for the roles. I still think the Siakam A8, very reasonable. Fred Van Vliet has gotten a huge price tag increase on DraftKings to 10-2, where, don't get me wrong, he's had some really big games. You know, he's put up 57, 54, 53, 76, but paying 10-2 for Fred Van Vliet is a little bit scary for me. Uh, maybe we finally got to that point with Fred Van Vliet in his uh, fantasy production. Maybe he's worth it. If he keeps putting up these numbers, maybe we'll be talking about Fred Van Vliet at a 10-2 price tag normally, but... For the time being, that's a little bit of sticker shock for me. I don't think I'm quite willing to go there. Maybe that's a mistake on my part, but I'd much rather just take the discount on a Siakam, Scotty Barnes, OG Anunoby, um, Devontae Graham, Jonas Valanciunas, Brandon Ingram in this game. Those would be the guys that I'm really looking to lock in on here. And then we talked about the value in Garrett Temple and Nikhil Alexander-Walker with there being no Josh Hart. Minnesota taking on Houston, the next game on the slate. This game right now comes in with a 230 over under with a seven point spread in favor of the Minnesota Timberwolves. So expected to be a very fast up pace game. The Timberwolves have gotten their big three back. Anthony Edwards, DeAndre Russell, though, both priced at very reasonable price tags here at 8K and 7 8. I think their price tags are definitely, you know, not high enough to limit them from their upside. We saw DeAndre Russell go out there and put up 52 DraftKings points last time out. Uh, Anthony Edwards putting up 40 plus, right around 50 as well. Carl Anthony Towns priced up the most out of these three. He'd probably be the one that I'm most willing to fade at 9-9. I just think he has similar upside to those other two guys. And at a 9-9 price tag, why would I want to pay up for that when I can just go to those other two guys, play a different center? Um, he certainly has a bunch of upside here, though. I will say the Houston defense has been terrible. They're dead last in the league. 30th overall in points per possession rank. 28th half-court points per play rank. 25th in offensive rebound percentage allowed give up. And 24th in uh, half-court percentage of plays rank, as well as 23rd in putbacks 22nd in putbacks i should say um so for that reason if there's ever a time for carlton towns to have a really big game don't get me wrong i'm willing to go to him i just think that anthony edwards and dan russell have a lot more upside for their price tag and we might be able to just play those two guys and then get some someone else in our center spot so but like i said if there's ever time for carlton towns to reach his upside this would be it this is a fantastic spot running it back it's really simple for me it's christian wood it's kevin porter jr apparently christian wood there's some serious drama going on with him in houston i don't know what to make of it um he came back, and supposedly he didn't want to go back in the game or something with the coaching staff. I don't know what's going on there. The guy's a fantastic play if that stuff just can get weeded out and he plays his typical 35 minutes. Um, I would encourage you to keep your eyes on the starting lineup. If for some reason, Christian Woods stops starting. Obviously, that would become a big deal, but him and Kevin Porter Jr. are really my top two options to run it back with on this Houston squad. They have the most upside. They can be a little bit versatile, but in a high up-tempo game with a seven-point spread, if it's going to stay close, I really think they're going to be the two main candidates to have big games, point guard, uh, center. And um, as far as anyone else, you could look to a Jalen Green and Eric Gordon and Jason Tate. They're all priced very reasonably. They don't quite have the same upside, but they're all priced in the mid 5K range in a very fast up-tempo game. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, these guys are certainly great value plays and uh, great tournament plays. Playing right around 30 minutes is Jason Tate. He's a great play. Jalen Green at 5K, playing right around 30 minutes a game. Um, probably going to be my least favorite of the three, but he's viable. Eric Gordon at 4'7". Once again. 
uh, if there was ever a time for these guys to really have a big upside game, surpass their price tags, this would be it. And um, I'm certainly willing to get a lot of exposure to this game, especially in that mid-range. Danger Russell, Anthony Edwards, like I said. Um, overall, this is just going to be a great fantasy point environment. And I'd be willing to take some risks on some guys that you might not be willing to play on most slates. Um, that could really grade out as great plays for me tonight on this particular slate. So yeah, I think we did a pretty good job of covering that. Let me just glance over, make sure I didn't miss anyone here on my sheets as far as the really grading up is a great play for me. And um, yeah, I mean, I talked about it. Christian Wood looks really good. Kevin Porter Jr. looks really good. Eric Gordon priced very reasonably in the mid-range. Yeah, those are all the guys that I'm really looking to on this uh, slate tonight in this game. Denver taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder as far as a total in this game. This game comes in with... A 214.5 over under 7-point spread in favor of the Denver Nuggets. Not exactly the fastest-paced game in the world. Denver should win this game very easily, considering the Thunder have just really not been good. Josh Giddy going to be my top option on the Thunder for his price tag. Playing 30-plus minutes a game does have a ton of upside when he's able to get out there. He does a good job of rebounding, dishing out assists, and when he gets hot from the field, he can certainly put up a lot of buckets at 7K. Shea Gildas Alexander, the other high-usage guy on this team, I just think his price tag is a little bit more friendly. I'm sorry. A little bit more, you know, accurate, but he has seen his price tag drop once again from 8.7 to 8.2. It's another guy. When these price tags drop, you've got to take advantage, especially when they've been performing bad. Maybe other guys shy away from them. So I think Shea Gildas Alexander could be a good tournament play for you tonight. Nikola Jokic at 12.2 definitely has not seen his price tag drop. It's gone up from 12K for good reason. He's the best fantasy point producer in the league, putting up on the season. Let's see, uh, 1.8 DK points per minute. That is uh, very good to say the least. So Nikola Jokic is always going to be an interesting play. I just don't really know if he's a necessity on this slate in this type of game. I mean, we talked about Carl Anthony Towns. Honestly, I probably would take the discount on Carl Anthony Towns in a fast, up-tempo game against that terrible Houston defense tonight on a slate like this. Um, Nikola Jokic is obviously going to be a viable play whenever there's value, though. And we, I think we do have enough value to possibly get to them, which we'll talk about later on the slate. So maybe you could even play Jokic and Carl Anthony Towns on the slate, believe it or not. Will Barton, Lou Dort, um, both priced in the mid-range. Both guys get decent allotment of minutes, and both of you could be playing in this game. Once again, though, not the fastest paced game in the world. Both these teams are looking pretty healthy. And I just think there's some other spots on this slate that I would much rather be targeting in this game. Jermichael Green at 3-4 is someone that's pretty interesting for me um, on this slate tonight. He's been getting quite a few minutes for this Denver Nuggets rotation. 22 minutes last time out. He put up 28 DraftKings points. He's still only 3-4 if we do continue to see him. Uh, in the starting lineup, I do think that he's a pretty intriguing play at that 3-4 price tag. So he's someone that I would certainly be willing to get some exposure to in this game. And we talked about Will Barton on the Denver side. If anyone else in this game that I'd really want to be uh, wanting you to get some exposure to, it'd probably be Monty Morris at 4-7, the starting point guard for the Denver Nuggets. His price tag still not quite up enough, in my opinion, at that 4-7 price tag for the upside that he can provide. 31 minutes last time out, he's been working his way back from the health and safety protocols. Only 27, 23 DraftKings points the first two games out, but it's just a matter of time before he can get up in the mid-30s, you know, and at a 4-7 price tag, you'd be very happy with that. So those are guys I'd be looking to in that game. Chicago taking on Dallas next game. The biggest piece of news we're waiting on is the Luka Doncic news. Obviously, he's listed as questionable. If he's indeed out, we're going to be taking a major look to a Jalen Brunson. Also, a Frank Nitlakina and Trey Burke would get some more run as well. Um, so that's the biggest piece of news. In this game, um, on FanDuel specifically, we still have a lot of interest in Jalen Brunson, which we'll talk about when we get to FanDuel, but um, on DraftKings, they've done a pretty good job of adjusting his price tag. The biggest guy that stands out to me for Dallas in this game is going to be Dorian Finney-Smith. He comes in at 5K, not exactly the best fantasy point producer, but the fact of the matter remains, he plays a ton of minutes, typically out there for the mid to upper 30s. And minutes, last time we only saw him play 23 minutes, that's because that game turned into an absolute blowout, so don't take that too seriously. We've seen him in other games, you know, play 37 minutes. So I'd expect him to get back up in the mid-30s. I've got him projected for 35 minutes in my projections right now. And at a 5K price tag, he's putting up 0.73 DK points per minute on the season. So, that you know, that's not terrible for a guy like DFS. I, I think he's improved in that category as well. So we'll certainly take that with all the minutes that he provides. He's the first one that I'd be looking to in this game tonight. Another guy that I think is priced very reasonably to pay off for you at his price tag is Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball is 7K, starting point guard for the Chicago Bulls. Uh, putting up some very good fantasy point per minute numbers on the season, 0.94 DK points per minute. And when you're looking at this game overall, it does come in with a 218.5 over under with a 3.5 point spread in favor of Chicago. So not the fastest pace game in the world. Uh, and all these guys being healthy, Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Nikola Vucevic, they're all going to be kind of cutting into each other's usage. Lonzo Ball is much cheaper than those guys, so there's a much more likelihood that he gets there at his price tag. 
Um, Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan have really not been performing quite as high as they were earlier in the season, only putting up like barely over 30 draft needs points a game. That's just not going to get the job done. It's been Nikola Vucevic who's really been stepping up and having some big games in the mid 40s to 50 plus at 9-1. Uh, once again, I'd probably pick one or of these three guys, or two maximum, and um, nothing more because they're just cutting into each other's use too, too much. If Luka Doncic is out, uh, Jalen Brunson becomes a fantastic play, obviously, but you'll also be taking a very hard look to a Tim Hardaway Jr. at 5'7". He gets a big bump up. He only played 24 minutes in that last game, put up 37 DraftKings points um, against that terrible Houston defense. Makes sense. And uh, he's someone that I would certainly be taking a very hard look to if there is indeed no Luka Doncic. Cleveland taking on the Golden State Warriors. The big piece of news that we've all been waiting for is Klay Thompson is expected to make his return. Now, he's going to be limited to right around 20 minutes. I don't think he's a viable play. I might have to put him on the thumbnail just because he's making his return. But, uh, I mean, Klay Thompson, love to see him back now. Uh, I don't think we can play him at his price tag on both websites right now. Maybe he can get you there in 20 minutes at only a 5'8 price tag. Um, certainly be worth taking the risk. I mean, if he goes out there and just starts nailing threes and ends up putting up 30 in a very small amount of minutes, could be looking good in your tournaments. Um, I'd love to. I just don't think it's really the smartest play in the world. But it's going to be great to see Clay back out there. It's a 218 over under, 9 points spread for the Golden State Warriors. So the Golden State Warriors are expected to win this game fairly easily. Uh, the person that's going to take the biggest hit with Clay Thompson being back is probably Jordan Poole. However... He is priced very friendly, and we're going to see him come off the bench as a six-man, which is probably going to give him more usage when he comes in with the second unit than he was seeing with the starting unit. So I do think he's pretty interesting. As a matter of fact, it could be an upgrade for him. Jordan Poole could kind of take over the second unit and really have some big games, and especially with the spread being kind of large with a uh, nine-point spread, maybe he gets some more run than anticipated because, you know, he's a young guy. They're going to run him out there minutes, not be afraid to play him plenty of minutes. He had a terrible shooting performance last time out in a game where he was completely chalked. And should have put up a big score. And he barely put up over 20 DraftKings points. So for all those reasons, I think that Jordan Poole could be maybe an interesting tournament option here. Running it back on the other side, Darius Garland's the highest usage guy, the highest upside side, upside guy at 8-7. He's seen his price tag come down from 9-4. Once again, a guy I'm willing to take advantage of that price tag adjustment. But I'm not getting too, too excited to be targeting him, to be honest, against this Golden State Warriors team. They're number one in the league defensively. Really good defensive team. I really don't like targeting them on you know with opposing players. So honestly, in this game, it's really going to be probably some secondary Golden State Warriors players, like I said, Jordan Poole, to be different in tournaments. But other than that, is anyone looking really good in this game to me? Not really. It's kind of a slower-paced game. These teams are both fully healthy. Um, looking at my sheets, the first guy that I would be willing to play here really like does not stand out. So I'm just trying to give you guys a reasonable play here. I mean, Andrew Wiggins is the first guy at 6'7 that stands out to me on my screen that uh, could have the largest upside for his price tag. But other than that, I got to be honest, I really don't like much from this game. So I'm going to be getting very minimal exposure here. Um, Andrew Wiggins, if you want to go there, would be my favorite play based upon the minutes, the upside, all that fun stuff. But uh, I'm not getting too excited to play this one, to be honest with you. So that'd be my approach. Sacramento taking on the Portland Trailblazers. This game right now, there's no D.D. Miller, There's no C.J. McCollum. De'Aaron Fox listed as questionable. Um, that is a very big piece of news. If he is indeed out, we're going to see Tyrese Halliburton take over that point guard position once again. That would make him one of the best plays on the slate. Take it on a Portland squad that's terrible at defending the three-point arc. That's terrible at defensively overall. Um, I love targeting them with three-point shooters. If there is indeed no De'Aaron Fox, going to be a fantastic spot for him. Take it on a Portland squad that is second to last in the league defensively. And Sacramento is 25th in the league defensively. So... Both these teams, not good on defense. This game comes with the 225.5 over under. Both teams possibly dealing with some injuries. Um, we already know that there is no Larry Nance Jr. in this game. So what does that mean? That means Robert Covington, Nazir Little, going to see a lot of minutes. Priced at 5-1 and 5K. Certainly going to be love getting some exposure to these guys in this game environment. So um, I'd start with them right off the bat as great plays here. Nazir Little at 5K, grading out as my favorite play from the Portland side. you also be taking... A uh, pretty hard look to, like I said, a Robert Covington. Also, Afridi Simmons, as long as there is no um, Damian Lillard. Going to be a fantastic play at 6-5 on DraftKings. I mean, that's just too cheap in this game environment. So, Afridi Simmons going to be a fantastic play uh, on this slate tonight. 
Yusuf Jokic, Norman Powell, priced at 7K, both great plays. I do think that Norman Powell is starting to get priced up a little bit too much for my liking, honestly, for his production. I'd much rather go to Yusuf Nurkic in that price range than Norman Powell. Norman Powell is a highly versatile player, though. He can get you know, up there. He's just very scoring reliant, so he's going to have to go out there and drop 30 points for you to really be happy with his price tag, most likely. I just think there's some better spots. You know, Halliburton, a Buddy Heald, Harrison Barnes, if there's no De'Aaron Fox, these guys would really jump off the page for me in tournaments. Uh, Marvin Bagley, really not getting the most amount of run. He finally got up to 29 minutes last time out, so that was nice to see. Just a little bit skeptical on his minutes. There continues to be no May 2, and his minutes have still been limited. We saw Damian Jones get the start last time out, but he only played eight minutes, and then Alex Lund started the second half and just absolutely went off. 28 minutes, 39 DraftKings points, so that's certainly something to keep your eyes on. If we do get confirmation that maybe Alex Lund's the new starter or something, um, overall, I think they just kind of handed the keys over to Alex Lund that last game, so I'm a little bit skeptical on Damian Jones, and I think that Alex Lund could possibly be a good tournament play, and Davian Mitchell at 3-4 comes in as a fantastic value play for me. Um, regardless of the news, I mean, obviously, if there is no Deer and Fox, he's going to get a big bump up. Regardless, though, he's only 3-4. I just think that's too cheap, and you can certainly take advantage of that price tag on Davian Mitchell tonight. But yeah, I mean, Marvin Bagley grades out as a pretty great play for me in my projection model. I do like him. Harrison Barnes grades out as a pretty great play for me in this fast, up-paced game. De'Aaron Fox would grade out as a great play for me if he does play. I haven't projected as in right now, grading out as, you know, one of the best plays in the slate. So this is a game that I certainly want to be getting a lot of exposure to, um, and I would encourage you guys to, too. It's going to be a great fantasy point environment. So, last game on the slate, another game that I want to be getting some exposure to because we are dealing with some injuries on the Memphis Grizzlies side. Steven Adams was ruled out. What does that mean? That means Jaron Jackson Jr. and Brandon Clark immediately jumped to the top of my list for plays on this slate tonight. Jaron Jackson Jr., 6'3", has seen his minutes really limited, put up 57 DraftKings points last time out. Um... The only thing problem with him is that he can get in some foul trouble, but with there being no Steven Adams, I think he's really got to be a priority for us tonight. And the same can be said for Brandon Clark. These guys really popping up the page for me immediately in my projection model. I also think DeAnthony Melton gets a pretty healthy amount of minutes here as well. He's priced too cheap over here on DraftKings at 4-6. I like him. And it doesn't stop there because I do think that Tyus Jones at 4-2 is a pretty intriguing play as well. So the, uh, the Memphis Grizzlies are really grading out as some a great plays for me on this slate tonight. They're taking on an LA Lakers squad that's really been struggling. It's a 226 over-under. These last two games in the slate really looking like a great, a great spot to get getting some exposure to on both sides. Um, and, yeah, like I said, all these guys can be viable plays. We're waiting on John Morant news. He's listed as questionable. And the same for um, Dylan Brooks. He's also listed as questionable. And Kyle Anderson. So, obviously... It's really important news here. It would be surprising if Brooks plays Sunday is the latest report. So, I mean, I've got Brooks projected as out. So, Tyus Jones, uh, DeAnthony Melton, Brandon Clark, all those guys we talked about, really going to be standing out. And there's no Steven Adams. And Kyle Anderson's possibly out as well. So, I mean, this is some big piece of news to be keeping your eye on on the Memphis rotation. If there's no John Morant, these guys are just going to be the best plays on the slate, hands down, for value. So, we really got to keep our eyes on that. On the Lakers side, obviously LeBron James continues to be the top payup option. He's going to be fantastic play here, taking on the Memphis squad. That's been bad defensively. We talked about that uh, Sacramento-Portland game being a great game environment. Same can be said for this one. The LA Lakers, 18th overall in defensive efficiency. When looking on the other side, as far as how Memphis grades out on the season, they have taken a big step forward, I will say. They make middle of the pack now, 15th in the league def defensively. They started out as one of the worst teams in the league defensively, but overall... Both these teams really don't scare me. You take all these guys out of the equation. Desmond Bain's going to be a fantastic play regardless here. No um, Dylan Brooks. Even if John Morant's in with no Dylan Brooks, that's a big bump up to a Desmond Bain. He's only 6'4". He's going to be just a, a phenomenal play here. So um, definitely some really great plays to go around in this last game. Some really great plays to go around in these last two games. And uh, that's my overall breakdown on DraftKings, guys. As always, you've got to prepare the site to FanDuel here before I let you guys go. Before I get you my lock of the night, we're going to talk about some FanDuel plays. There's definitely some big pricing discrepancies over here on FanDuel. Brandon Clark and Jaron Jackson Jr., I talked about them, um, but they stand out right away with there being no Steven Adams over here. Brandon Clark priced at 5-4. I'd expect him to get a lot of minutes. I've got him projected for about 30 minutes in this game. Um, at that price tag, he's going to absolutely smash. The same can be said for Jaron Jackson Jr. If he can stay out of foul trouble at 6-2. He is just too cheap, so I will gladly get a lot of exposure to him on this slate tonight. Um, De'Anthony Melton at 6'2", also grading out as a pretty phenomenal play over here on Fandle, believe it or not. Uh, with there being no uh, Dylan Brooks expected to play, he's really just going to really stand out. So De'Anthony Melton at a 6'2 price tag. 
Certainly someone I'd be willing to get some exposure to. Really good fantasy point producer. We saw him play 23 minutes last time out. He put up 35 Fanduel points. If he can get some more minutes, you know, like high likelihood that he has an even better game here. Russell Westbrook at 8-4 on Fanduel specifically, a lot cheaper than he is over there on DraftKings. I'm certainly willing to take a risk on him. He's been really inconsistent, has been really a letdown for the majority of the season. But if that's going to keep his ownership low at an 8-4 price tag, I mean, the guy's easily capable of going out there and putting up 50 Fanduel points. If he does that at 8-4, he will certainly be very, very happy with that performance. So I like him. Jonas Valanciunas at 7-6. Way too cheap over here on Fandle. We talked about that game being a pretty good game environment. Uh, with there being no um, Josh Hart, I think the rebounding upside is actually a lot higher for him, believe it or not. You wouldn't typically think of a wing guy having that much impact on the boards, but Josh Hart really does grab that many rebounds. So I do think that he's a great play. Gary Trent Jr. at 5-2. We talked about him just too cheap for a guy that gets as many minutes as he does over here on Fanduel. Um, for the Toronto Raptors. So he's certainly going to be a fantastic play on this slate tonight. OG Ananubi at 6'7. Mo Bamba at 5'9. Too cheap. Um, so yeah, we, a lot of these guys we talked about on DraftKings as well. Scotty Barnes at 6'3. These, these Raptors guys are just really too cheap over here on FanDuel. I mean, you got to take advantage. These guys play so many minutes. Looking at the small forward position for OG Ananubi 6'7. Scotty Barnes 6'3. Gary Trent 5'2. These guys all play in the mid-30s minutes, all good fantasy point producers, and, and all taking on a New Orleans Pelicans team that's just really not good defensively. So on FanDuel specifically, um, really standing out to me on the slate tonight. I do like Carl Anthony Towns at 9-7 as well. Um, grades out as a pretty great play for me. I do think that I like Carl Anthony Towns quite a bit more over here on um, FanDuel than DraftKings. I don't know. He does grade out as a pretty good play. It's funny, I'm kind of talking in circles when it comes to Carl Anthony Towns because typically I just take the discount on a Anthony Edwards and a D'Angelo Russell and I still think that's valid, but I really think if there was ever a time that Carl Anthony Towns could go out there and explode for 60, 70 points, this would be the matchup he could do it. So I might I might kind of go against my typical rule here and get some pretty heavy exposure to Carl Anthony Towns. So just, just keep that in mind. All right, guys. That is my overall breakdown of this slate today. If you haven't already signed up for Parlay Play, guys, check them out. Before I give you my lock of the night, use that promo code KJK003, link below in the description. Um, I'm going to be giving out some picks on the live stream later today as well, and a, a lot of live streams going forward. So um, we're going to try to finally hit one of those big ones. I don't know if I'm being too stubborn, and I should go back to maybe some two picks that will actually hit. Um, let me know in the comments, guys, if you would rather have me do the two picks for parlay play, maybe some more conservative picks that might actually hit than the, the risky ones. I've been getting real risky just because we're up so much. I figured I can continue to be risky until we get down to about, you know, $100. Then we can probably get really serious about the bankroll. Our record's 8 and 16. I think I dropped to 8 and 17 last night. Um, so unfortunately, our record's not looking the greatest. We still profited a bunch, though. That's what I really want to show on this segment. I want to show that you can profit without being perfect. Um, so sign up for parlay play. Also, check out the premium content link below in the description, patreon.com slash kjk underscore DFS. You get access to all sorts of fun sheets. Um, I did just recently post a video on what all those sheets do for you, how they work, all that fun stuff, how to win at NBA DFS. So check that out on my channel if you're wanting to know exactly what the package has to offer. And with all that being said, guys, got to give you my lock of the night. Let's get into it. And my lock of the night tonight is going to be Brandon Clark. No Steven Adams in this game. Coming in now with a much larger role and a great fantasy point producer in a 226 over-under game against this LA Lakers squad. I've got him projected to play a lot more minutes. Only 4-7 on DraftKings as far as FanDuel is concerned. Priced at 5-4 and a fantastic fantasy point per minute produ producer. 1.17 FanDuel points per minute on the season. As far as draft is concerned, 1.13 DK points per minute. And like I said, fast up pace game here. No Steven Adams. Jaron Jackson Jr. famous for getting in foul trouble. There are many routes to big minutes for Mr. Clark in this spot tonight. Get him in your lineups because he is my lock of the night. So there you have it, guys. Brandon Clark. Get him in your lineups. And that is all from me in this one. If you do enjoy the content, if you could please take a second to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future content that I upload or when I go live, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll be here all NBA DFS season long, breaking down these NBA DFS slates to help you guys become better NBA DFS players, help you guys win some money night in and night out. And um, yeah, that's all for me, really. If you enjoy the content, 
hit that like button subscribe to the channel I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video i wish you all the best of luck tonight hopefully you tune into the live stream if not we will see you in the next one